I haven't learned a thing. We were ripping out wall boards and putting ropes on them. And so I, the, the shortest distance between two points is not a straight line as they teach in school. It's really a sharp angle. And uh, nearly every problem has some way of dealing with it. My concern is people are sleeping on the ground. And, and I was just trying to get them off the ground. I don't care if it, how it happens, but with the way the economy is now, there are a lot of people that are very comfortably placed that could be on the ground. So I listen to a lot of different concepts, and, and the, most, the simplest thing I've come up with is something that we designed to, to serve Mississippi, and we already have all the materials on hand. And that is we can build what would look like a little hunting cabin, merely be 8 by 12, have a just a slightly sloped roof, exterior siding, a door and a window, and a sleep one person or possibly a couple. Since they have the, uh, the latrines there and they have the, the dumpster, and, and TDOT really very easily for almost nothing could clear out the brush in that whole area to where it's Appearance-wise, it's all right. And if you had, if you've got a population of 20 people there, of which part of them may be couples, you'd only need about 20 temporary units. And we designed these to put them on what looks like sled runners. They're four by fours with kind of a sloped front, and we can just pick them up, put them on a trailer, pull them to another place, whatever. And we can give them away as camping cab cabins for people that are hunters. When, when the city got through with them. But uh, my idea was to just have a, a solution to where you get people in out of the cold for the winter and these units could just be locked up then for the summer and if you had anybody need them the following winter then you could use it. Otherwise, there are a lot of hunters that would gladly accept them and bring their trailer and pick them up. That's about the size of it. But those, those creative shelters that have been built need to be bulldozed over. And the area needs to be, it doesn't hurt to leave some trees and some some greenery, but not have such a dangerous setting there for both the homeless and anybody else that might go down there. But it's, it's not a big project. You're probably talking uh, 20 units would cost us about $20,000 and cleaning up the area would cost more than three or $4,000 and then another four or five thousand to put some gravel on your your right of ways, but it's uh, you know it would it, I can see where the city would be concerned. That Nashville being a beautiful city, a tourist center, people drive over the bridge and see something that looks you know worse than Hooverville, and so it, it needs to be cleaned up. But also the the respect for people that are there. Regardless of how they got there or why they got there, they have some needs that, that their, their fellow citizens need to address. Otter Creek Church has offered to help, and, and I'm willing to help, but uh, that's about where it is. But these little, these little cottages would not look that bad. They'd, they'd be very comfortable, be insulated top and bottom sides with, with T111 T siding and
better situation for myself. And as I said, the sheriff's office is committed to helping out in any way we can to facilitate this process with we, we put inmates out on trucks every day to clean up areas and do things of this type and we're willing to continue and to work in this particular project. And if I may make a comment, we went down last Saturday and firewood. Somebody had permission to cut some dead trees and split them. And the population down there is not that much different than the population in this room. You know, there, there's some quality people there now. You may have, being in close proximity, you may have conflicts and with alcohol, drug problems, you may have conflicts. But I've, I've never worked with a crew of people that I enjoyed any more than I did those people last Saturday. I would enjoy being with them, having lunch with them, having coffee with them, or anything else. So, so, uh, the, did I hear someone say that the units would, would start going in tomorrow? Well, they don't go in until we get the okay, but we do happen to have a truck there with one unit on it. Okay. Uh, okay. Just to show what they would look like. Okay. And that would be my proposal that we build one, maybe put it on Lyle's property there and just, it can be disassembled or drugged somewhere else or reloaded, but just build one and let you see what it would look like and take a look at it one day next week, maybe toward the end of the week. Would they, I mean, how would we determine who's actually supposed to live there? Are the people going to sign a lease on this property? Because if I get a call, if this is a, a permanent structure, I mean, if they have to be numbered one through four, what would the address be? I mean, where would we go to? Mm -hmm. And who's to say that since these are provided for free, and they are given to anybody who lives there in Tent City. How am I to know that the person that lives at the third one on the left can't just go into the fourth one on the right and take all that person's property? Because do you see what I'm saying? There, there is well, the there's going to be a con I'm, 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 there is going to be a, you know there's a constitutional right there, and, and you know you'd have to know you know who's there, and probably the reason I mean. Once people find out that these nice structures are going to be there, there are going to be people down there, just like there's people moving in now, that are wanting to, you know, take ownership there as well. So I don't really see that there's any way that we're going to be able to determine who's supposed to be where and who's supposed to be in what structure. Well, there's six acres next door that's owned by an oil company that's just been sitting fowler for years, and some enterprising homeless person may get a year's lease for a dollar and least out space to a bunch of his neighbors. Okay. Well, you guys talk to the code department about the building code of wires. I don't know if you have any structures. If you did that, you'd have to, I think you'd have to have a particular occupancy to do that. you guys talk to the code about that at all? These are storage units for the homeless. It's where they store their valuables. They want to stay there all night and watch them, they can. If they're not a permanent structure, they don't have to have codes. They they're on sled permit. runners and they don't have well, utilities. I've been a contract for years. If they're not a permanent structure attached to a permanent structure, you don't have to have any permits. I guess one, one way to look at it is it's kind of like a trailer park. I mean, we're, we're, it's, it's just trailers. And we're bringing them in and we're dropping trailers off and people are, you know, occupying them and they spend them. We can pull them off in the time. I mean, it's, it's one thing I guess presently was there. I mean, that's what you one, have to do. one thing about it, if if you put 20 inches of there, then only 20 people could stay there. You can clear it off. Then you, you, you could not allow any additional tents or other structures. That's one, one possible way to kind of provide some governance for it. And who decides? What do you mean who decides what? Can you decide who goes to Well, I think we could go back to some information that the Park Center has gathered and the residents that have been there for a long time. Keep in mind that this is You work from that list, I guess. I don't know I mean, have we asked the owner of the property and is the state willing to let the... Yeah. Well, this is the first state heard of this. Uh, like I said earlier, I don't want to put Winslow on that spot. No, we'll, we'll take a plan that the committee...